And hey guys, welcome back to the Game Switch Stage E3 2015. I am joined by Dirk from Ubisoft Blue Byte. Hello. Hi, we're nice going to be talking to you. about, you too, we're going to be talking about Anno 2205. That's right. So we saw it at the, at the Ubisoft press conference the other day. Yeah. What was the reaction like? Oh, we were, we were super excited to, to be here at E3 and to present our new city builder to the international public. And yes, it was, it was a very good reaction afterwards. We, we took a look and we were really proud of what we saw. Twitter feed just going mad. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit about Anno, the series. I mean, it's taking a, it's taken us through history. Yeah. Uh, and then we had 2070 that took us a little bit into a, a scary global warming infused future. Yes, yes, um, you're right. It was a big change uh, for the yeah. series because, as you said, they were all in historical settings before, and it was the first time that we went into the future. Um, but uh, this um, topic with uh, warming and um, the more critical stuff, um, yeah. that's over now with, with the newest installment yeah. of our future vision. This is more about exploration again, which is the core of the series. So yeah. it's a more positive approach. We will go to the moon and uh, conquer moon. So yes, it, we're, we're going even further into yeah. the future. And Absolutely. now uh, not only is space travel viable, but building space colonies. Yes, yes, that's true. So we will start on Earth as usual, mm. but then we will go beyond Earth and we will make our colonies on Moon to make yeah. life on Earth better. So yeah. that's uh, a real so difference. So you can see on here. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, so what you see here, this is uh, the space part. It's, uh, it's fully upgraded. So you see there's a space elevator already going up and there's some energy being transmitted. Uh, from moon to earth so this is really there's already has been a lot of progress uh, here in the game so when you start this is like a small building site and you have to build this up supported with all the infrastructure mm -hmm. and supported uh, with, uh, with, with with the big city and a lot of people I mean it's a big spaceport a lot of people working here yeah. um, so uh, you, you have to earn your way up to the moon so yeah. uh, it's quite a task the players are up to I mean so why why did you uh, design it that way why couldn't we just be dropped on the moon uh, yeah, well, we did a lot of a lot of uh, research. Um, obviously, there's a reason. I mean, we've been there in the 60s, and we are not back on the moon uh, yeah. right now. So, uh, and so we asked the scientists and the people at university. So, well, what do you think? Of, uh, when could it happen? And they say, yeah, it will take some time because uh, getting us up there is really expensive, yeah. and there's a lot of interesting resources for us to get from moon, but we have no way to harvest them right now. Yeah. So we moved another 135 years to the future. So this is the time when we can make it happen. And the players will have to build these cities that you see uh, to, to set up the necessary infrastructure. So all, everything you see here, this is really just built by the players. This is just a safe game. Somebody from our team uh, oh, wow. uh, played up. Uh, it, it, it took him maybe a few days uh, to build this. So yeah. yeah, this time you can build really big, impressive cities on Earth. And then later, huge colonies on Moon. So it's all about the player's freedom. And you can see landscapes also have an impressive size, so players can really do everything they wish. Uh, so, I mean, uh, let's start from the very beginning then, I yes. suppose. I want to make a city. How do I do it? Oh, uh, you want to make what? I'm I sorry. I want to make a city. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it's obviously, it's, it's city management, city building game. Yes. There's resource management to deal yes. with, uh, you know, yeah. satisfaction, it's, it's jobs. In its core, it's a city builder, but it's, it's also, um, there's more to it, there's, there's a lot of, uh, of features linked to the city building. So what you can see here, there's a huge uh, economic uh, aspect to the game. So you have to set up the necessary infrastructure to support your people because this game is really about caring about your people that live in your city. So they have needs and you have to set up the infrastructure and to, um, to give them everything they need so they are happy and they will pay you more money and mm -hmm. you can set up bigger, bigger operations. So that's like the basic gameplay circle. Uh, are there going to be factions? Um, yes, there will be factions, but um, this is part of one of the new features. Uh, they are not part of one gameplay session uh, because this was too complex in the last game for yeah. a lot of players. So there are still more factions, but they are separated in different game worlds. So you have like the moon people living in the, in the Luna, uh, um, Luna colonies. So there's minus officers, stuff like that. And on Earth, you have like the normal people living on Earth, yeah. and they are supported from the Moon guys, stuff like that. Yeah. Awesome. So, let's talk a little bit about life on the Moon. Yeah. Um, because I mean, it's going to be very different. I remember reading that because the Moon, you know, it's susceptible to asteroids and things. Yes. So there's yes. going to be debris flying around. How do we save our precious Moon city? Yes, that's that's really different. So what you see here, like this nice 
Earth cities, this is something on Moon is totally different. Uh, there's no really big metropolises up there. Um, there's colonies, so um, uh, in a little while we will see a Moon colony, um, so uh, you'll be able to see that it's a more hostile environment up there. Yeah. So um, it's really about um, protecting what you build there. So uh, I know is a protective game, so you really build up something and you, you have to care for it. On Earth, it's easier. On Moon, it's more difficult. As you said, there is no atmosphere on Moon. Yep. So um, everything that drops on the surface has a big impact and destroys everything you built there. So yeah. you have to set up uh, shield generators, for example, to protect you, everything you built. And um, then also your people will suffer from radiation and stuff like that. So you have to build up a medical center and support them and stuff like that. So we did a lot of research on this. Yeah. Uh, what you can see here is Aha. this is the moment when, when in the game the player will be able to leave Earth behind <laughs> and uh, fi uh, find his way up to the moon. So um, this is uh, a big moment for the player. And then you see here, these are like different worlds you can enter. So there's a strategy map. Mm -hmm. And you see they are all combined, so they're all running at the same time and you can choose between them uh, any way you want. So you can leave behind one game world and go into another one, for example, switch between Earth and Moon. And there's no loading screen or something, you can just, while yeah. the other session is loading, uh, you can continue to play the game on a strategic level, set up your routes or uh, take a look at, uh, at your goods and do all of this uh, meta game. Um, and so the game becomes more and more complex while you play it. It starts yeah. very easy, but then for the advanced gamers, it's really a complex a strategic game. And here we are then on the moon. Yeah. And uh, you see there's a, a spaceport on moon too. Um, it's, this one is also nearly fully upgraded. Um, but you see the moon is really different environment. No animals, <laughs> no it's wildlife. Yeah, yes, it's, it's more mystical. Um, it's, it has a totally different approach from, from the look and feel. Also, uh, politics become rough up there because people really want their share of the moon. So you, as a new corporation being up there, uh, you are really um, not welcomed by them. So co um, the competition gets rough up there. And uh, here you see one of these moon colonies. They are built inside the craters because the craters on the moon, they are the more protected areas. Yeah. So this is all the, we did a lot of research. And on the sides of the craters, you see there's a lot of mining going on. Uh, so that's why we are up there to, uh, to mine the moon. I mean, so let's talk a little bit about what we're mining. I mean, because it has to be something yes. special if we're going to go all the way up there a for Absolutely. It. Uh, that's what we were asking the scientists. Well, yeah. why, why should we go up there? And they said, oh, there's some interesting things to be found on the moon. Uh, the first one is uh, the helium-3. Yep. Um, uh, it's an isotope where we can create energy from fusion energy. Uh, that could be something in the future to solve our energy problems back on Earth. So that's something the players will be able to do. And also on the moon, there's a mineral layer called creep uh, below the moon dust. And uh, you will be able with giant harvesters uh, to, to harvest the moon surface and to get your hands on, on the creep. So uh, that's stuff the players can do. And then in the end, they will become self-sufficient, as you can see here uh, yeah. with these biospheres. So in the beginning, you will be getting up everything onto the moon and it's very expensive to support your miners up there. But later they will be able to be become self-sufficient and then send back all the precious stuff down to Earth. So uh, that's that's a huge part of the game to become self-sufficient on moon. So I'm interested, so this is, you know, this is my moon city, things are going fine. What's happening on Earth? Is that in a, again, kind yeah, of suspended or is it every, no, everything's ticking No, no, ticking no, no, you don't, you don't suspend Earth. It's, it's still your home planet, of course. They are connected. So uh, in the end, you will be even able, uh, you will be able to set up a little moon tourism. So one of the side stories of, um, of, of this uh, big uh, campaign that is the, the main narrative of the game, you will be able to set up a moon hotel for, for the upper class. So uh, they want to visit the moon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and to see, well, I've been there, you know, in the moon yeah. hotel. So players can, can do this. Uh, but here you see, uh, these are like the, the creep harvesters mining the moon surface, um, yeah. getting all the stuff done. So it's more uh, a moody, a more mystical place. But you, you don't abandon Earth, of course. What do you see here? These, these fusion reactors, they, they bring back the energy, for example, down to Earth via microtransmitters. So um, it's, it's there to support support Earth and then if you have the support from Moon you can build like really big cities back on Earth yeah. with, with thousands of buildings with millions of inhabitants. So it's a real symbiotic relationship. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. So uh, they, they are connected 
and, and that's the principle of this game. So all these different game worlds, they are connected um, by the player and uh, he can set his focus wherever he wants. So he can focus on building really big moon colonies or he says, no, I like, I like them only to support Earth and build big metropolises on Earth. It, it's all up to the players. This is really a sandbox game. Uh, with narrative elements, but it, the player is the king. His freedom is the most important thing here. So you mentioned you mentioned a narrative. Are you going to be going into any details about that? Yeah, uh, um, we will go into details later on that. Yeah. But there there is a main uh, narrative in the game, even though it's a sandbox game. So you're starting as uh, the underdog corporation yeah. being called to to um, a Luna licensing program. So you take part in that to get a license to be able to go up to Moon. And as I said, once you're up there. Uh, the competition gets real hard and there's even uh, some evil guys showing up and uh, yeah, you will be able to save the world of course in the end, but I'm <laughs> I, I will talk about that <laughs> later uh, because there's still some way to go until November yeah. 3rd when this game is going to be released this year. Wonderful. Dirk, thank you so much for joining me. Cannot wait to play later this yeah, year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, guys, make sure you stay tuned here on the GameSpot stage. We've got more awesome games coming up here from E3 2015.